Good morning, everyone. So as we know, as uh, lovers of the night sky, you know, light pollution is our biggest bane of our life and it can have a dramatic impact on uh, both uh, what we can see in the sky and uh, the quality of the images that we can uh, obtain. And uh, if we look at here, uh, this is Cyprus, uh, where I live, and uh, I'm down on the southwest corner uh, in the Paphos district. And we can see, obviously, over the main population centres, you know, got some really bad light pollution, the darkest areas, uh, transitioning out uh, to almost black skies in the Yakimis Peninsula, which is a national park. So I'm uh, in the transition between uh, Kasonaga and Emba villages. And according to the World Atlas 2015 data, uh, just roughly in that area, uh, I'm in a Bortle Class 5. Uh, and as we know, the Bortle Class number is the one that we hear talked about all the time uh, on the forums, etc. And, uh, and this is obviously how, how bright the sky is uh, for that area. Uh, where Bortle 1 is dark skies and Bortle 9 is uh, inner city. So I'm sort of in the middle of the of the range. Uh, but the other number that we also see on here is the SQM number. Uh, and this is the, the radiated light uh, from any given area that can be measured. And uh, this is something we're going to look at today uh, with a sky quality meter. So in, in association with this, uh, if you haven't seen it, I would recommend you go over and uh, watch uh, Trevor's video from Astro Backyard. He published in, in April. Uh, talking about light pollution and the ways to uh, you know, resolve it and uh, how you can contribute uh, to you know get rid of the, the problems uh, that we have. So if you haven't seen his video, I highly recommend you go over uh, just to see uh, what he's got to say. So as I said, we talked about the Bortle scale uh, you know, from 1 to 9 and uh, 1 being the best and you can see the associated uh, SQM uh, magnitude per arc second squared. Uh, so a Bartle 1 dark sky is 21.99 to 22 and then uh, where I am uh, according to this is a class 5 suburban sky uh, 19.5 to 20.49. However, uh, I did notice uh, about to a year ago uh, the local municipality, uh, they replaced all the street lights and uh, to downward facing uh, LEDs uh, from just unshielded uh, open bulbs and that has made a significant difference uh, to the amount of light pollution uh, coming into uh, my garden uh, and in the general area. So I'm just curious now as to you know how that compares uh, maybe to what uh, the data uh, shows us on the light pollution map. Uh, if I switch over to the, the VERS uh, 2020 map uh, for the rough area. I'm on, I'm on this transition between the yellow and the green and uh, you can see the area how over time of the various studies how the light pollution has uh, been varying and it, uh, it appears to be uh, on a decline again. So what did I decide to get? Well I went and had a look uh, on the internet at the various uh, models and things that's out there and a uh, company in Canada uh, Unihendron, uh, they produced a range uh, of models uh, from handheld units to Ethernet connected units to data logging units and uh, they're all got slightly different capability and if we compare them here you've got the handheld the wide and narrow field beam uh, field of views which has a big difference uh, to actually meter monitoring the, the sky quality and also whether they're, they're handheld units, they're connected units and uh, if they're fully autonomous data logging units etc. So the one I decided to, to go for was the uh, USB connected model, uh, the non-data logging one because it will be hooked up to a laptop all the time inside the observatory. Uh, so that's what we're going to take a look at today and as the unit is going to be outside it's also uh, going to be uh, within uh, an outdoor housing. All right, so let's get into that and take a look at what's uh, what's in the box. Okay, so we've got two boxes. One contains the out outdoor uh, weatherproof housing kit, and the other one contains the uh, sky quality meter. So we'll just quickly take a look at what's in these. And this is going to find out there's bits missing, but so it's never been opened. Alright, so straightforward. 
aluminium housing. I think it's aluminium. Sorry, plastic housing. A which is effectively a PVC a box unit with a, a lens cap on the top and inside some packing foam. Uh, some clips uh, for mounting uh, using the supplied universal clips uh, onto uh, a pole and at the bottom we also have uh, a hole that we can run the, the cable through and uh, some perforated uh, foam backing just to keep uh, the beasties out and a set of instructions so very straightforward uh, housing there okay on to the main event uh, we've got the Sky quality meter. Bunch of not very friendly environmental uh, packing chips. USB cable, a 15 feet, I think it is. Yeah, USB 2 to type A to type B. Uh, the unit is uh, USB powered. And uh, in here we've got. Uh, USB flash drive that's supplied 16 gigabytes and I don't know if the main software is on there or we download it off the website and we've got instructions uh, and uh, a note about how you can record uh, and submit your observations and then we have the um, USB sky quality meter so straightforward, just a USB Type-B connector uh, on one end, as I say it's uh, USB powered and then on the top of the unit we've got the window uh, for the actual uh, measuring. Straightforward and then this will obviously sit inside the housing like that with obviously all packed in, cable coming in through the bottom and then we just adjust the, uh, the positioning of the window to match the, the position of the lens. Uh, so that should be straightforward to do. So on that note, let's uh, head outside to the observatory and uh, let's get it fitted. All right, so here we are at the back of the observatory. Uh, this is the rain sensor for the, the automatic shutter closing. And this is where I'm going to be installing the um, sky quality meter. So the first thing I did, uh, I had a couple of um, spare hardware uh, plates uh, lying around in my toolbox. So I took one of these and I made an L-shaped or a Z-shaped bracket. And it was set up in such a way that I can just simply slide it in underneath the uh, universal clamps and it'll sit underneath them and it also gives me clearance from the, the joint uh, on the bay roof and it will sit around about there and then I can adjust the height uh, once it's in place. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to mount the hardware. I've already checked it also behind so there's no cables in behind here, this is in the ventilation fan area. mount that on here but I don't have any um, I need to go to the hardware store I don't have any more um, cable ceiling joints so I'll worry about that later I'll still drill the hole because uh, I know what size it is because I, I used it for a installing the rain sensor cable I can easily do that now Pen. 
Excellent. So that's that. So now, Steady enough. Okay. Next up. And pop up through the perforated foam on the bottom. Okay, so there we have it. Next. We attach the Next up, we'll attach this guy quality meter. Clean, and grab your fingerprints, pull it back down slightly, make sure there's a loop on the bottom of the cable. Running along the cable, if we do get any rain, and then pack the meter where it needs to go. Just to hold everything in place. Suit. And there we have it. Right. So one thing I will do uh, once I'm satisfied everything's working, I will put uh, a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly around there just to give it a little bit of a seal. And I might even put a screw just to gently And that's it. Outside bit done. Let's head inside. Okay, so here we are on the inside of the dome. Uh, this is the back bay that I mentioned in the previous videos uh, with the ventilation kit and everything. These are the power cables. So that's where we've punched in the uh, the hole for the, the cable for the SQM and to the right of it where the cable for the, the rain sensor is. And all the zip ties at the moment have been put in back to front so that I can actually remove them without having to cut them until I get every, all my cabling and everything sorted out. And uh, obviously once uh, once I get the uh, the gland for the cable entry, uh, then I'll have to redress, I'll dress all the cable in. Uh, so in the meantime, I've just put the screws on the back of the, uh, the brackets, although they are screwed into the plastic and they're holding seal fine and we'll just plug uh, the USB cable into uh, the hub uh, on the mount at the other side if I can get around to it without knocking my telescope over so I'll just temporarily stick it in there and the laptop just beeped alright so over to the laptop All right, so I've installed, uh, so I haven't installed anything. I've uh, plugged in the USB drive that came with the uh, SQM meter. And opening up that, you can see we've got a bunch of uh, HTML files and then a whole bunch of folders relating to all the various devices. And if we open up the one which I'm using, which is the SQMLU, the USB one, uh, it gives us this uh, readme file effectively. And it tells you uh, you need to install the device manager and the FTDI USB driver, uh, which I don't think already is already. I don't think I've installed it for anything else uh, on here. And then there's the, FQ, uh, the firmware files and then the SQM reader. Now there is no ASCOM driver shown on this at all. However, if you do go across to the Unihedron website, uh, wherever that's gone, I think I closed it. And uh, look on the USB connected and go down to 
uh, software, you will see that there is an ASCOM driver uh, listed on there. So we'll maybe have a look at that as well. All right, so first up was to install the device manager, uh, which is in the UDM folder. Uh, sorry, it's not, it's in the Windows folder. And just run setup. And next. Okay, and uh, so now we'll install, that seems to be open, so we'll just close it again temporarily, and we will install the FTDI driver, which was on the disk as well, FTDI, Windows, and Certified Extra. Let's take it over here. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, let's go and get the FTDI driver off of the internet. So Windows FTDI driver. Windows 10, I'll go away with all your warnings. Windows driver. Looks like it's the same thing. Let's see what happens here. And set up. Okay. That's better. And we did have an error on the device manager saying that the FTDI driver device wasn't recognized and that warning is now gone. So we can close that and close the device manager and get rid of that and finish with that and finish with that. So let's open up a Unihon device manager which we installed first and now we can see it found a device on COM6 and let's see firmware, firmware details I don't want to go and screw it up quite yet Uh, let's say information log one record. That's a one thing. Time zone information. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. There we go. There's a reading. Yes, yeah, so we're in broad daylight, so we wouldn't expect anything other than a silly number. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we are appearing to be reading there. So I would say the device is working. So let's now install that uh, software. The SQM Reader. I'll just download the free version. Now it does say it should be on the disk, uh, sorry, the USB that was supplied. Uh, I'll just see how well it is there. When uh, utilities, and SQLM, it's in here again. Firmware Arena. It says it's SQM setup. Is it in the Windows? Oh, it's in the LE folder for some reason. So let's use that. It's obviously common for all the devices. Okay, let's install. Next, accept. Can't really do anything else but install. And 
let's run it and see what happens. Finish. And we select the model, which is USB. And it was on COM port 6, which appeared in the device manager. And it can take a reading every 15 minutes it's set for, but let's see what happens when maybe I read now. And there we go, time of reading. And it's reading, which I would expect is a ridiculous number being during the day. So all good there. So ASCOM, see what ASCOM does. Uh, it doesn't have the driver listed here, remember, but it was on their website. So let's download the ASCOM driver. Uh, it's come from Dizzy Astronomy, so it's obviously a third party. And let's download that. That's key. It's 1.8 meg. It's downloaded. Let's open it up. More info. Run anyway. SQM serial driver. All right, so that's it installed. I don't know where we'll use it, but we're going to install it anyway, just in case. Uh, it does say it provides uh, all the compatibility with the LU, the LR, and the LE models of devices, so we're fully covered there. So instead of using the third parties, what we can actually do as well is configure um, the likes of APT to read directly. Uh, from the device. So if we open up APT, looks like it's connected to camera, never mind. Uh, so we go to tools, APT settings, I think it was, and on T and Sky tab. Of APT settings, you can see there's a sky quality sensor uh, to use, and we can use the SQM LU, and it's on COM port number six, and it can take a reading however frequently you want it. And what this will actually do is with each image uh, the software uh, grabs from the camera, it'll embed uh, the SQM uh, reading onto your fits uh, onto the fits file uh, as another reading uh, profile okay if we enable the sky uh, quality tracking obviously we've already selected uh, the port and the frequency uh, how often it's going to do it uh, but if you then go across to the graphs tab uh, graphs button you can select sky quality meter and we should see uh, the sky quality uh, as it starts to get dark uh, tonight so I'll, uh, I'll report back in a, uh, in a future imaging session on uh, how that looks. Okay. And uh, we'll see what happens tonight once the, uh, once the sky comes down. So in the meantime, that's it for just now. Thank you very much. And uh, as I say, we'll uh, probably in the next video, once the next imaging session, I'll uh, have a look and see what the the data has given us. I'll speak to you later.